day two, day two of the Hobie BOS on the Susquehanna River. We're gonna fish pretty free today. We're gonna, we have a couple spots that we're gonna hit majority of the day, but we're gonna start on the stretch we started yesterday where we lost that big one, lost the other one, had another blow up. But we're gonna start up higher, work our way down, try to maximize the window and see where these fish are gonna be at shallow. It's gonna be cloudy today. It's gonna change up the conditions. So we're gonna try our best to try and adjust with them. Try to stay on top of them. We got 87 inches. We're in 20th place at 192. And I think if I can get 85 inches today, I can cash a check and get in that top 19. But you know, that's that's bigger picture. Today we go one bite at a time, one fish at a time. Stay positive, stay in it mentally, and uh, just keep grinding because things can happen. There's big fish in here. We haven't had that, you know, big big bite yet so if we get under that that can that could definitely change things for us and, and help us in a way we need it so just want to uh fish clean today i want to stay positive i don't want to get negative at all i know you know things are going to happen with small mouth and top water so i want to keep my head in it and i'll be i'll be proud at the end of the day if i'm still staying positive regardless of the outcome if you guys have not already if you're liking this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you have not already i'll see you guys at first cast we go 6 a.m. Let's go catch them. First cast is out of the way. We got to our takeout yesterday, and I still had over an hour left to fish. So we're gonna make sure we're managing our time better today and fishing this stuff, fishing it right. Gonna hit stuff longer. Be more thorough. Pick up the spinning rod. Spinning rod that we actually lost in the water yesterday. And thankfully, my buddy, Mr. Ewing Miner, who is sitting in third for this tournament, found it. That was clutch. I was uh, a little bit depressed. Learning that reel might have been gone. That rod and reel is a nice new Fenwick Elite with a Xenon. A new Abu Garcia Xenon spinning rod. Well, we got our first blow up of the day and oh god no way dude what the heck come on man that was a good one too like dude all right that freaking sucks dude i filmed a spinner bait for a little bit i guess I don't, I don't understand why they missed that so much. It's so frustrating. That was a good one. Like, oh, stay in it. Come on, stay positive. <laughs> okay. That hurts a lot. Oh god, I'm gonna be sick. Oh, oh. No way, do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up, dude. That was twenty incher. Like, I just feel depressed because like I, I'm there's nothing I could do I didn't do anything wrong I played him right it looked like he had it good like I, I, just, I don't get it I don't get it it's that one's really hard to stay positive after if you're just gut ripped out of you I'm losing it guys 
I'm slipping. Oh, I'm trying to hold on. That, like, just knowing how much that means right now, that really hurts. So that fish is gonna sting for a long time. Now, I haven't, like the last time I just talked to you guys, you know, for you guys it's seconds, but for me, I, I it's 45 minutes later, I think, 30 or 45 minutes. I've calmed down. I needed to give myself some time to kind of like let everything just settle. I mean, it's gonna sting for a while losing that fish because I know that would have really, really, really helped me today. I understand this is part of the learning process. This is part of the challenge. This is tournament fishing. This is this is chasing hardware. But God damn, is it painful. That part sucks, but it humbles you. I've been having a really good streak of getting lucky with some fish, getting them in the boat, not losing fish, especially in tournaments, and it's only a matter of time. As unfortunate as that is, there's nothing we can do about it, so we have to keep our head down and go back to work and keep on casting. Get in the net, would you? Please and thank you. You get it, what the hell? Thirteen. Please be a giant. Please don't be a catfish.
Oh god. Eighteen seven five. Go. Oh. That helps the cause. Seventeen. Seventeen seven five. All right, guys. Got an 18 and a 17 three quarters back to back. It's making up for that lost big one, but there's always that thought in your mind of if I caught that one and the big one that blew up on it early, you know, if you're looking at almost 90, I'd be over 90 inches right now. Uh, you can't have those thoughts. You gotta stay positive. You can't think about the what ifs when you're fishing because I can guarantee half this field right now probably has had the same situation where they had a fish they really would have loved to have, whether yesterday or already today, but either got away. Lost it, blew up on it, never got it. One way or another, I'm not the only one. So it's, you play the variables that you can play. I best set up myself to catch that fish in terms of my setup, gear, terminal tackle, everything. And it came off. And maybe I shouldn't have thumbed it, but straight braid and actually that, I had a mono leader on because I was losing them straight braid yesterday. And I thought I was doing my best, you know, after this tournament, I'm gonna evaluate that it might just be chalking up to that it's just river smallmouth but regardless i need to just keep my head focused spinner baits you know saving me again seems like every tournament so far for hobie bos i've thrown a spinner bait in some capacity i guess maybe not chickamauga which if you haven't watched that video yet right here we're gonna keep plugging away at this spinner bait just because that one single hook gives me a lot more confidence than treble hooks so keep plugging away Definitely feeling a little bit better. Fifteen and a quarter. <sighs> Broke my dang spinnerbait. I wonder if I can steal a blade off of that one to put on here for the time being. All right, <clears throat> so now we have an 18, a 17, a 15, a 14, and a 13. So we gotta get rid of that 13 and keep grinding away.
I got myself in a predicament here. On my chopo back there. At least it wasn't a giant, but it definitely would have helped. But I think it's par for the course today. It is what it is. I was asking for it by still using it. It's kind of hard to know when a spinnerbait's going to break. Just get up here, replace the spinnerbait, and get back going. Gosh dang. A lot of missed opportunities today. It's a one inch call. We'll take it, we'll keep any re we'll take every upgrade we can get right now. And I think that should put us right at 80 inches. So everybody saving the day once again. No call. No call, no call. Go, dude. <sighs> yeah, seventeen and a quarter. It's a three inch call. See you later, mama. Okay. So here we go. We just called out a 14, we had a 17, we gotta get a 14, two five out of here. We have 83 and a quarter.
All right, guys. It is, I don't know if you can see that, the glare. It is one o'clock. Means we got two hours left. We really need to get rid of that 14 incher if we can. I have 83 inches right now, and I ran into Zach. And when I told, Zach told me about an hour ago or an hour and a half ago, uh, he looked at the standings and we were in sixth place. So, I mean, probably around 20s because people are probably waiting to submit their pictures. So I feel like we're right on the cut, if not maybe a little bit out of the cut. So we need to go get rid of that fish if we're gonna wanna get in a check range. So we're gonna go head to these falls here and uh, where we caught a fish in practice and see what we can do. Stay tuned. All right guys, we have a little under an hour, like 50 minutes left in the tournament. We're sitting in 11th place. We still have yet to upgrade. We're making one last move to hopefully catch, just to upgrade that 14. I don't care if it's a 15 or a 16. It doesn't even have to be a big one. I just want to upgrade. Goodbye. Goodbye, 14. Here we go. There's a one inch call. All right, that's it. That is it. All right, guys, that is a wrap. Uh, I will do further recap, like setups and everything. Omnia fishing report will be in a second here, but uh, I'm actually just packed up at the house Just got back from the award ceremony and we are now starting our four-hour drive back home Get home around midnight. We ended up in 17th place out of 192 uh, And I was looking at some people's stories on social media a Decent amount of the day apparently I was in sixth place, but that doesn't really account for much because there's people that haven't submitted their photos etc it looks cool in the time and you know it's uh looks good for sponsors that type of deal because your name's up there well i ended up dropping down to 17th uh won 800 bucks can't argue it uh decent roi coming home from it Just a couple extra 100 bucks in the piggy bank but man was that a grind Talk about a lot of heartbreak too. It was an emotional roller coaster, especially today. I mean, yesterday too. I mean, it was aggravating losing so many fish on top water, and it was one where I, I really play, uh, played around with that top water setup, treble hooks, split rings, everything. And for the life of me, just couldn't get them to actually take it, and I couldn't get them like those these fish. It's almost like you're chasing ghosts. Uh, there's these random rogues in sections that literally have nothing and that's it seemed to be when you get those to eat for some reason They're big ones. I kind of relate it back to Great Lake smallmouth where you'll catch a school and they're all You know four pounders and then you'll cast away from that school and once it by itself into six That's kind of what it was uh, The first bite I had in the morning and if man if I could have capitalized on that I mean I'm sure everyone's had these stories of if I just caught that one fish or I had this giant blow up on this, etc, etc, and people are sick of hearing it, but man, my tournament would have been, like, I saw these fish, like, I, it would have been, it would have shook some things up, that's for dang sure. I'm not saying I would have won, but it would have, we'd be walking away with a lot more money and a lot more AOI points. But, speaking of that, we have 
we accomplished our mission. In the end, we accomplished our mission. Our goal here was to one, obviously come have fun, uh, to learn as much as we can about this river fishing, being that it's it's relatively new to me. Like, I fished St. Lawrence River, and that, that, but that's a completely different beast. I mean, this one was, I mean, you're getting a workout in, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and my, I wanted to learn as much about it as I could, get better at it. Uh, just, it's a new challenge. And the goal was to get rid of that 48th place finish from Toledo Bend, and we did that. That is exactly what we did. We called it out with a 17, so now our top three tournaments is what Hobie takes for Angler of the Year. It's a first, a 12th, and a 17th. So whenever that updates AOI standings, I probably will be around no, any sixth to eighth place, give or take. Feels pretty rewarding for my first year. Definitely exceeded my expectations. So I'll get into it. I'll have a full recap of everything. I'm driving home right now. You guys will hear about what setups I caught them on, what baits I caught them on, Omnia fishing report. So we will skip to talking about baits and setups in three, two, one. All right, we are back. We're back in New York. Just after the tournament, we've had some time to kind of mentally recap and go over our event and how we did. Some of the things we did good, some of the things we did wrong. And I'm gonna walk through some of the things that were clutch for me in this tournament and a couple things that I think I could have improved on. Being that the Susquehanna River was a brand new change of scenery for me, uh, there's definitely a lot of gaps in my performance. Am I happy coming away with the check and a 17th place finish out of 192 anglers? Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. But there are some learning lessons that I figured out for next time or if I go back to a similar fishery like the Susquehanna River. Now that it's pretty unique, but there are some places in the country that set up just like it. So first things first, I'm gonna walk through my setups that did all the damage for me. Um, and again, you can go on Omnia Fishing uh, below. I actually linked my fishing report from the Susquehanna River and that I'll see, and that will take you to everything. I caught them on, links to them, where to buy them, and then you can use code Sirius10 to save yourself 10% off your whole order. So to get into the setups, the bait that I started with, the bait that got me the biggest bites, and also, same point in time, the bait that caused me the most heartbreak. You guys saw how many missed fish, lost big fish that I don't, I mean, I'm sure everyone lost fish, everybody did. I don't wanna know how good the fish I lost could have done for me, but again, like I said, learning lessons, this is our first time there, and I really, I chalk it down to a color deal but uh, the bait that got my biggest bites was the Berkeley Chapo 75. Uh, this is in bone. I actually swapped these hooks out to owner STX 36s, even double split ring the back one, and I was still losing fish. And I lost fish not because of the setup. It was not the setup's fault. We're gonna get into why I think I lost those fish, but this is the new Abu Garcia 7.6 medium heavy moderate shallow cranking stick. It's actually John Cox's Pro Series rod. New rod with Abu Garcia. We have an Abu Garcia Jordan Lee bait caster, 7 1 to 1, and then 40 pound braid to a 17 pound mono leader. It's only about probably 20 inches long. Again, I don't think it was the setup's fault. I think one, I could have played around with color, first thing. That would have been my first experiment that I should have gone to but secondly the people that I think had a better hookup ratio on top water were people that were waiting where I was floating down river with these fish hard when you're moving and the fish are moving to get tight and get a good hook set I think if I was standing waiting through that river I would not have lost those fish so that is one note that I took but that top water really did show me where the fish are at. And one thing I noticed is that area, first thing in the morning that I started out on, I was getting my best bites of the day, my biggest blow ups. I should have hung out in that area and waded through it. You know, I kept thinking, oh, I gotta keep paddling back up and it's gonna be a pain for this drift. When in all actuality, I should have stayed and fished that heavily. Cause that was my best area, unbeknownst to me until literally the, towards the middle of day two, I was like, man, I really should have honed in on that area and picked that thing apart. So again, lessons learned. 
So when I wanted to actually start putting fish in the boat, regardless if I was wading or if I was floating down river, uh, and it was actually wasn't really much this spinnerbait. I did catch fish on this spinnerbait. This is actually, I don't even know the name of this spinnerbait is. Drew Gregory, my buddy I was staying with, gave this to me because I ended up running out of the spinnerbaits. All I had was like uh, ounces and ounce and a half. Because I ran out of all my small ones, got to do a new order on Omnia Fishing. But I started out with a War Eagle and broke that on like a 16. That actually probably would have helped me on day two. And reverted to this. This is a, a spinnerbait. It's, it was pretty straightforward. I have a three and a quarter inch uh, Strike King Rage Swimmer on the back in Ghost Shad. It's just my favorite spinnerbait trailer. I have way more confidence when I have that trailer on a spinnerbait than without it. Um, this again is another Abu Garcia Pro Series rod. It's the new Adrian Avena Pro Series edition from Abu Garcia. It's a 610 medium heavy fast. Pretty much your straightforward spinnerbait rod. Uh, Corrado DC 150, 20 pound fluorocarbon, and then again, that's spinnerbait. And that's what did a lot of my heavy lifting. Those are basically the whole setups that I used. I did catch them on a bladed jig, uh, none that really helped me at all, but it was a fun bite. Uh, those are the two setups that really put all the bigger fish in the boat for me. I threw a hair jig around a little bit in practice, but just wasn't as, wasn't as efficient in that current. So again, those will be down below, linked in the Omnia Fishing Report. You can head there and go. It'll take you right to the links to these products. I don't know if the Pro Series rods are on Omnia Fishing yet, but they will be. And then there were three other factors that played very important for this trip. And one you saw was a complete different boat that I was using throughout this event, throughout practice and throughout the event. And that was the Hobie Eye Trek from our friends over at Morgan Marine. That played crucial. That was a whole different boat. The Pro Angler that I'm actually sitting on right now, which we're going to break out literally tomorrow. We have another tournament tomorrow local. Would not have fared as well as this Eye Trek did. I was able to get through skinny, skinny, skinny water. And it's super light, super easy to port around and to take. I mean, it forces you to go lightweight which is really nice. It was a lot of fun. It was a big, nice change of scenery. Uh, and big thank you to the folks at Morgan Marine for hooking me up with that. If you are in the Northeast and you're looking to get yourself into a Hobie and not a Jackson, if you want to get yourself a Jackson kayak, head over to Morgan Marine, link down below, and they will hook you up. Now, secondly, an item that I think a lot of people talk about, there's different apparel and such that people use that think it's beneficial. Uh, and it's true, there's a lot of great companies out there, but one thing I relied on throughout practice because I'm trudging through water and I'm also dealing with sun. I'm dealing with wet clothes, dirty, you know, and it's, but the sun's beating down on me and I got to beat them up, uh, was blackfish gear. The sun gear, the face mask, everything throughout practice was crucial because I was getting wet, I was getting soaked, I was sweating, the sun was beating down on me and that was able to keep me comfortable, keep me cool, keep me regulated and uh, obviously not having the sun beat me down. I was tired, but the, thank you to Blackfish Gear because that was, the sun gear is phenomenal. And if you're a winter angler, it's even better. Having the right gear, especially during practice when you're going balls to the wall from dark to dark is very crucial. And lastly, because uh, I know sight fishing was the deal for Nolan Miner. If you guys have not checked out that episode on the Serious Angler Podcast, check that out right here. Uh, that episode uh, right here, right here. That episode was really, really good, and you know, Nolan and his brother who won two, they're talking about they were sight fishing a lot, and there were some cases where I was looking at these smallmouth, and I was able to circle back or target them specifically, and that is with a good pair of sunglasses, and not only a good pair of sunglasses, but a good pair of lenses. Right here, this is the Hobie Eyewear. There's a pair of Hobie Eyewear Bluefins, and the most important part is that lens right there. That is the Sightmaster lens. It's like a mix between a copper and a yellow and that makes the entire bottom of that water pot like completely glow. Uh, sight fishing lenses, low light lenses, these are the way to go. I'm, I'm in love with these things. Every time I'm fishing shallow, I am always going to be wearing these lenses. And you can save yourself some money. Again, link down below. We'll have discount code and everything. You guys can go and save yourself money. Uh, another part that was really cool about these is that these float. So when you're trudging through this river, and you're, you know, some parts you're wading, some parts you're paddling, some parts you're dragging, and there's a lot of moving water. If you drop something, say goodbye. These float. So if you lose them, they fall off your head somehow. You're going to get them back. So guys, this is where chasing hardware is going to take a halt for a little while, at least for a couple of months, because that was our last regular season Hobie BOS event until the Hobie Tournament of Champions in November down in Louisiana on Cattle Lake. 
After this event on the Susky, we are currently sitting in seventh place overall in Angler of the Year standings. Just a few spots, just a couple points out from making the Hobie World Championship, which would be pretty, pretty dang cool if we could do in our first year. But we've accomplished a lot of things, but our sights are now set for November, and that is where the Hobie Tournament Champions again will take place. I'm beyond excited, and I really have to thank you guys for sticking along with me this season. A lot of support. A lot of you guys said you've been enjoying the series, and that means the world to me. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you think about Chasing Hardware. Give this video a like. Chasing Hardware has been a really fun series for me to film and produce, but it's not over yet. We will see you guys in a couple months for the next episode of Chasing Hardware down in Louisiana. We got a lake.